Jug band music is really comes right from the heart. I don't have to look very far for uh, musicians to sit and jam with me. It really, truly is roots, Americana roots music, and uh, that's one of the things that I love about it. No matter what's been going on, this thing is always in need of, a, of adjustment when I take it out. It's kind of wobbly tonight. Here. Jug Band's music is, uh, you can call it poor man's jazz. It doesn't take much to look around in the kitchen and find something to beat on. And you want a little space so that when you hit it, they knock together. And that's basic. Step one, step two. Step three. And a four. I really like old blues and jazz, and I, I like playing the oddball instruments. I like trying to uh, see what can make a sound. Uh, I, I like to invent and, and remanufacture things that aren't supposed to be instruments. I like to make noises and, and music out of things that aren't, aren't the official sanctioned uh, good stuff. I have a uh, harmonica jug. I use metal for various reasons. Uh, I have a nose flute and a kazoo. I'll be playing all those. Down below here is the banjo U and a washboard on a stick, a State Fair favorite. And then of course I do have my uh, suitcase drum down below. Thought I'd give you a little demonstration on how you play the jug. Uh, this one is uh, handmade by a local potter. And uh, you don't blow in it like that, but you wet your lips. And of course, tighter the your lips are, the higher the notes. Low, loose lips, low notes. So basically, the jug kind of uh, is a resonator, amplifies the sound. You want to be first or second? You're going to do melody? I'll, I'll start it off. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'd like to show you a washboard that's uh, slowly over time kind of coming together. Lee put these together for me, uh, sim thimbles, and uh, by the way, your fingers don't have to fit in there. They are on, uh, and this was an old Christmas bell. I think Lee took the ringer out. And with the glue and pliers, away he went. Well, sometimes you might want to start out kind of simple, just keeping a basic beat to whatever the song might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to do a little bit more of a, a softer sound, now you can take your brush and uh, I think just hold it that way. And uh, so you got spoons. If you don't have gloves, spoons will work real good. Yeah, 
it allows people to play that haven't had any experience uh, playing music. Uh, you've got a washboard, a wash tub, and uh, spoons, and sometimes even slapping your knees and tapping your feet. It's, uh, it's a creative thing, and uh, that's what I love about jug band music. Going to do a little uh, show and tell here with wash tub bass. Uh, initially, for years, I had an old wash tub, and just a uh, nylon cord I got out of a hardware store. And uh, this, you can use that or not. Uh, and basically, that was the wash tub base. Uh, the bottom of the stick, there's a, a little um, groove there, and that's gonna, and that's gonna fit on the. Uh, yeah, that'll fit on the edge there, and basically, uh, if you want to go real high, maybe grab that cord. And uh, we'd put a 2x4 under the, the edge of that and get that wash tub up so some of the sound would come out. Now this one here was made by a friend, kind of did a nice Celtic cutout design here. Jug band itself, what we know now, started in St. Louis. A guy that had played a lot of medicine shows started uh, playing uh, getting people together. Uh, the Dixieland Jug Busters came out of that and later on uh, Gus Cannon heard that down in, in uh, Memphis, Tennessee from Louisville, Kentucky. From there the various groups in Memphis really took off and uh, then kind of the folk, great folk scare of the late 60s, uh, Jug Band was rediscovered uh, as a way that, well there were blues players jazz players and there were bluegrass players and they were all in folk music and the one thing they could play together would be to come together and do jug band which kind of had elements of all of it. There's another, uh, the vaudeville side of it too, which uh, I got to admit I've got some of that in my soul and I know you do. Yeah, and yeah. There's a mixture of that in it too. At least that went through the 30s, yeah. People, the, the Hoosier Hotshots uh, always had their washboard player. And, and there have been these guys doing things. Saw was always a vaudeville act. People playing the saw or, you know, Mr. Spoons or just these oddball things. And, and you know, these little acts that would come out in between the big acts, the apron acts.